This is a young goshawk. A few hundred years ago, she was the equivalent of Ocado, the perfect predator to put food on the table. Hares, rabbits, pheasants, she was a vital part of any kitchen's utensil drawer. So today we're off to God's larder to see what she can get her talents into and what we can get our teeth into. Today, we're going to be going out and seeing if we can get a few bits and bobs for the pots. We're hoping for maybe a rabbit and uh, hopefully a pheasant or two. We've got Jordan out with us today as well, flying his red tail. Um, Jordan's my apprentice. He came where he started coming down and uh, we got him doing all the mucky jobs, clearing out and uh, doing all the, uh, the normal things that we get uh, apprentices to do for a year. Um, and the beginning of this season, he started off with his red tail. And uh, for a ginger, he's definitely not doing too bad. He's worked out uh, quite well. Yeah, he's, uh, he's turning into quite a good little falconer. So, uh, well, I say little, he's fucking huge, but... Um, <laughs> see the size of the boy's hands? Um, <laughs> Relevant? <laughs> I don't know. Girls beware. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we've got, we got Jordan. Jordan's out with us with his red tail. Um, we're going to give Jordan first dibs to try and catch a, uh, a rabbit. But a lot of people don't bother flying um, red tails off the fist at, uh, at pheasants and at feathered game. But she's done it. She has done very, very well um, so far on feathered game. So if we do get a slip on a pheasant, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get one for Jordan and uh, we'll see if his, uh, his red tail can perform on those as well. Roy's issues with red heads and men with big hands coming to the fore there. Where were we? Oh yes, falconry. Another essential part of the shopping trip is ferrets. Roy has brought along a few bright albino flavours. With young birds, it's best to have these amazing feisty little creatures looking as unlike a rabbit as possible. The first set of burrows is tricky to manage as there's been some hedge trimming, so we move on. Now, many people start their falconry career with a Harris hawk, but Roy recommends a red tail as a starter bird for Jordan. It'll be a bit more work, but there are some long-term benefits. I think it's a shame that um, apprentices don't start off their, their falconry careers with birds like red tails because they're a little bit more difficult um, and take a little bit more understanding than the Harris hawk. So for a, a, an entry level bird, uh, your first bird, I think you can, you can learn and gauge a lot more from them. Um, but as with all of them, you know, a lot of people will, will buy a new bird and then move straight on after a year or two to something else. Whereas, you know, they're all fantastic birds and they will all last you a good, you know, 15, 20 years um, of a hunting career. We have more success at the next spot, but the fences are a real problem in this part of the world and the rabbits are neatly evading the wire, which could easily kill or end the career of a bird. Unfortunately, when you're flying down here in this area of the country, we are hounded by fences, and fences is something you've got to be very mindful of and very aware of because your hawk can get badly damaged on them. But uh, I was hoping the rabbits were just going to come out or maybe go across that hedge right over there, but they're they're just weaving their way down, so we've just got to be a little bit careful with this earth and it will uh, lift the ferrets up and move on. Moving across the fields, Roy's other shopping assistant, Atos, looks like he's on point. It could be our first pheasant flight, so we all get into position. The hen bird flies along the ditch and manages to find cover, and the goshawk runs out of room. Roy feels it's a case of a fast pheasant and a young goss with a confidence issue. But on we go, and Jordan's red tail gets more of a dive than a flight. Incredibly, the bird is strong enough to keep hold of a bouncing bunny with a very sharp toe. That's the advantage with the red tail, they're so robust and so strong that, uh, I mean, she only had hold of that with one leg, but she stopped it from running down the hole. But hopefully we'll get some better flights. Well, at least we won't starve. There's a rabbit in the bag, and moments later Ready, there's another opportunity for the goss. She is a gnat's earlobe away from making contact, before a second dive. Nice effort, but still not off the board yet. Atos once more smells a nervous pheasant and we're away again, but this super-fast goss needs a bit more practice on these flying feasts. Our last chance falls to Jordan. With so many holes from where a fleet of foot rabbit will dart running for its life, it's pretty hard, especially when there's a small tree in the way. The head start means the red tail has too much ground to make, but it's still a spectacle.
not quite that day we were hoping for. Um, unfortunately, only a couple of pheasants kicked up there, so uh, we've uh, we've got a few invites towards the end of the season on a few sheep. So uh, we'll get on there and uh, see if we can do a little bit better than that. It was the first time this hawk's been flown on pheasants, and uh, she was the first time she's seen pheasants. So uh, she flew one reasonably well, um, but obviously the first time you show them, they're not uh, not overly confident. And then taking a, a young hawk out. This time of the season, the pheasants are all very fit rather than starting at the beginning, so uh, I'm just getting my excuses in quick here. Um, obviously, we had uh, a very short one with Jordan's bird, um, and it was just the luck of the bolts because obviously we had a, a couple of fantastic bolts that went right across the open um, field for us, but uh, it was just a, a combination of being in the, the wrong spot and not seeing them. So, uh, yeah, I think the, uh, the moral of the story for that one is must try harder. It's a really exciting way to spend an afternoon, even if you've just got one rabbit to show for it. Roy is now determined to put on a show before the end of the season. Don't have to be a game chef like Mark Gilchrist to appreciate that no one wants pigeon foo in their sandwiches. But when the skies start to darken thanks to bird numbers around wheat storage barns, it's joined by Roy Lupton with his air arms air rifle. Roy has zeroed the rifle at 30 yards, so when we have a couple of birds around the 50 yard range we have to start looking at bullet drop more closely. It all depends on the pellet drop here, so he's just over 50 yards away. The pellet drops nicely into the chest. 